Good evening, I'm Nicole Gitsky, anchoring from home this evening in for Timmy Melchok. Aton Wallace is in for Jim Scott in the 17 News Center tonight. Now, Aton, we will see you shortly. In the meantime, though, it's a grim holiday season for all of Kern County as the number of coronavirus cases skyrockets. But it's especially dark for our most vulnerable neighbors, those living in local nursing homes. Hundreds could face death in the next several months. 17's Alex Fisher has more. Convalescent homes combine two killer components on which COVID-19 thrives. They're home to the oldest and most vulnerable segment of our population. And right here in Kern County, some of those seniors are jammed into facilities that had atrocious records long before COVID began a merciless attack that killed dozens this spring. Health officials are concerned winter could be worse. Th these are people. These aren't numbers. State and federal inspections prove poorly run skilled nursing facilities hosted life-threatening conditions long before 2020. That made them perfect targets for an opportunistic predator like coronavirus. Kingston Healthcare Center was an infamous example. For me, it's been hell on the earth. We wanted to speak to management about the abysmal conditions outlined in state and federal health inspections. They wouldn't talk. I'm just trying to get some answers. The outbreak at the Kingston Healthcare Facility. Now, 14 residents have died at Kingston Healthcare Center. We did the story anyway. Then, residents reached out to us. Oh, it's awful here, Alex. I, I don't feel good at all. I feel, I feel like I'm trapped. We dug deeper. What we found is alarming. Kingston's overall score is so low, a rating of much below average is too generous. It is literally off the charts. A score so low, Medicare doesn't even have a rating for it. Medicare puts two special warnings on its Kingston webpage. The only facility in Kern with labels. One warns of elder abuse. The other warns of a history of poor conditions, like cramped rooms, smaller than what's required, poor lighting, and privacy issues. Federal reports show the home had 39 health citations, triple the number for the average home in the state. Medicare designated the 184-bed home a, quote, special focus facility. It's had that distinction for more than two years. And it's only one of 32 homes in the country that has not shown improvement, according to federal documents. I was a Christian when I came here. But I just slowly, because I couldn't get anything done at all by being nice, uh, I got to start losing my temper, losing self-control. And I have turned into an angry person. This place can make anybody angry. The Medicare reports document conditions at Kingston before coronavirus hit. When the pandemic did arrive in local skilled nursing facilities in April, it hit Kingston harder than other nursing facilities here in Kern. In early May, conditions were so bad, the state had to send 41 health staff to help. Reports show conditions improved, but damage was done. 104 residents tested positive, 19 died. The horrors weren't limited to Kingston. None nearly as bad, but nearly every nursing home in Kern County had an outbreak. Three dozen people in 11 homes died. More than half were from Kingston. The virus slowed in the late summer, but the fear of a more disastrous and deadly winter remains. When we did our story in June, we again reached out to Kingston and the Los Angeles company that owns it. No reply. We continue to look for information wherever we could find it. We found it on the state health department's website. And what we found was shocking. We discovered that in May, two days after we first broke the story of the outbreak at Kingston, Poor infection control continued, exacerbating an already big outbreak. State public health reports say the facility was in a condition of immediate jeopardy. The reports highlight a coronavirus super spreader on the smoking patio at Kingston. The report says eight residents were outside without masks and not social distancing. A nurse, the report says, passed cigarettes to the group without washing her hands in between. Within four days, seven of those eight residents tested positive. The outbreak continued for weeks. Now, eight months later, 
the threat remains and records show mistakes are still being made. State health records show Kingston is still receiving deficiencies. The most recent, published just a few weeks ago, found a staff member not wearing proper PPE before going into a resident's room. Today, cases are back on the rise across nursing facilities in Kern. Public health records show two homes, Kern River Transitional Care and Parkview Julian Healthcare Center, are once again seeing the largest outbreaks. When things were at its worst for nursing homes, the state mandated each skilled nursing facility create a mitigation plan to stop the spread. Through public records, we received copies of those plans. The nearly thousand pages of documents highlight common practices to reduce the risk of coronavirus entering a facility. In theory, the plans limit the risk and instruct homes how to react quickly to a possible exposure. All this in place to save lives. But the actions can't simply be printed out on a piece of paper. Protocols must be followed. Any, even one resident that is getting uh, sick and testing positive indicates that there's some sort of failure in the system. It's not surprising these homes had issues when coronavirus started its reign of terror. We've been tolerant of poor care, of, of care that doesn't meet the standards that are set in law. Um, and I really think that the thing we need to change that is leadership. We need leadership in Sacramento to say enough is enough. Government reports warned of poor infection control before COVID-19. One report says most nursing homes had infection control deficiencies prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Half these homes had persistent problems. Nursing homes Medicare has listed on its website, nine are considered below average or worse. Four have been cited for abuse. And despite the fines and damning reports, advocates say little is being done to curb the problems. So we knew that nursing homes had a massive problem with infection control. We knew that they were significantly understaffed. Then if you, if you had told me back in February, we're going to add in a very lethal virus that spreads uh, among asymptomatic patients, uh, how do you think nursing homes are going to do? I'd say, well, that's, I mean, that's a, a recipe for disaster because facilities have a culture of non-compliance. They have a culture of bad infection control that's been accepted and tolerated for, again, for decades. California Public Health oversees skilled nursing facilities, but a state audit report says the department has not fulfilled one of its key oversight responsibilities to ensure nursing facilities meet quality of care standards. We, we don't demand the same kinds of loyalty to the standards that we would in, for example, child care. Some of these homes are penalized, but the fines are minuscule compared to the amount of money that comes in every day. You can kill a resident and be found liable by the Department of Public Health for having caused the death of a resident, and the maximum fine you face is $100,000. That may sound like a lot to some folks, but that was the standard that was set in the 1980s. The troubles are far from over as coronavirus remains an active threat, but better practices could come at the cost of nearly 5,000 lives in the state, including dozens in Kern. I think we'll have probably some better infection control standards. I think we'll have some more infection control enforcement in the years going forward, even after COVID-19. Uh, but in terms of real structural systemic change and improvement, I, I don't see that happening. And that was an important investigation from 17's Alex Fisher. Alex, thank you for that.